Hey guys, it's me. Um, sorry, it was a little delayed today. I'm at PetQuest. Um, still here. Uh, this is the trade show. They just finished up Rescue Rodeo with the announcements of the winners. Uh, congratulations, Steph, for winning uh, with this really adorable puppy. So if anybody's in Ohio, uh, it's a little, like, terrier mix. Very cute. Uh, I'm going to walk a little bit because now everybody's barking since there's movement. But I wanted to talk today about building community. Um, a lot of groomers get burnout and they ask, how do you avoid burnout? And one of the things to avoid burnout is that you build a community. So for me, it's here competing. Um, I have some of the best people in the entire world in my corner when I compete. Um, people that have watched me grow as a groomer have helped me, have given me tips, are, um, you know, there to support me. I'm trying to find a space, and I'm very sorry. I would normally do this outside. Hi, Mary. Um, but it's really windy, and I could barely hear myself talk. Uh, so anyway, avoiding burnout. I see a lot of times on the Facebook pages about you know they're stressed and tired and I don't think I can do this forever and part of continuing to do it forever is to know that you're not alone you need to build a network you make connections it, it can help you in so many ways but especially with burnout you know I always feel better when I um, come back from a show I feel refreshed, I have new ideas, I've got new toys to play with, and that's great. But also, um, you know, I've spent time with the people that mean the most to me. Hi, Barb and Rochelle. Um, so, how do you build a community? And how do you avoid burnout? And there's a lot of ways to do it. And, and you know, people are like, oh, well, my local groomers aren't nice or whatever. I came here with a local groomer, Liz Signs, who's been my grooming best friend forever. I love her very, very much. And she's, you know, kind and smart and wonderful. And I can't say enough good things about her. And I met her through a seminar. And I understand that that's not in everybody's budget. We can talk about how you make it in your budget next time. But I started with her. And then I met someone that she knew and then we met somebody that they knew and all of a sudden your competitors become your colleagues and you start building that network now maybe you're the only groomer in your town because it's a very very small town and you can build a community in other ways but again this job's unique and special and nobody understands you like another groomer is going to understand you these Facebook groups are great for building a community. I have an entire community of people that I only know online that we talk and we talk. They know more about my personal life than some of my people that I know in real life. Um, because it's somebody you can commiserate with. And when you're feeling low, it's easy to feel like you're the worst person ever and that contributes to burnout because it's all parts of stress so like Mary talked about last the other week um, meditation is one way to handle that but also reaching out and, and putting a hand out and having somebody to take that back um, and make connections and you know grooming is something you can do forever you don't have to and there's ways you know if your wrists hurt your shoulders hurt there's equipment to help you there's ways to avoid that by just doing small dogs but the mental fatigue the compassion fatigue those things are what cause groomers burnout it's not your body doesn't just ache because of physical things it aches because of mental and emotional things when I don't feel good my body doesn't feel good Exactly, Mary. Mary said we are not islands unto ourselves. We're not. We're like a, you know, um, there's a, a little, like, children's book, and it, it it's 
Serendipity is the, they were self-published in the 70s and they were great, but there was one that was about a horse and the horse built walls up and around the best clover because she didn't want to share. And eventually all the other horses built up walls too. And the moral of the book is to not put up walls. Um, Meadow ends up tearing down all her walls and then everybody else. <laughs> no, this is, I'm at Pet Quest, Mary. Um, but Meadow t finally tears down her wall and um, so the other horses and then they all become a community. So taking that and you know, you're not necessarily protecting something, but don't put up walls in between yourself and other groomers. You, you miss out so much. And you need that community. You need that space to have, like, to talk about your groomer problems. You know, uh, somebody that can commiserate and be like, yes, no, I totally understand. Because when you are not in an emotional or mentally great place, you end up with that physical illness, you know, that physical ache. And community is so important with keeping your mental health. Oh, yes, yes, no, Mary, it is exactly like hanging out at a mall. I thought you meant all the noise, and I was like, it, it does sound like a mall in here. <laughs> um, so, even if you're going to get rejected by your local people, reach out. Give them, you know, um, Liz and I are planning a seminar, which is coming up um, in August. We're about to announce all the details. But we also started a Philadelphia Groomers Group. And so you can do that. Facebook, you know, allows you to make free groups. You know, reach out to those people and see... If they're interested, even if it's just to join the group, just to chit chat, just to do whatever, at least you've made one connection. And then somebody in that group is going to come in and make another connection. And these groups exist in all kinds of communities. It's not that hard to do. And don't be afraid of rejection. Like, yes, not everybody's on Facebook. Not everybody wants to join another group. Not everybody's going to want to come to a groomer's lunch. But New Jersey does them, Florida does them, um, the Pacific Northwest does them, hopefully Philadelphia, we, we've done one or two, um, Karen Fromfield, who's another local groomer to us, has had pool parties, um, I've never gotten to go because I'm always working or was at a show, but hopefully this year, um, so start building that network if you don't have one, and if you do have one, start engaging more. You never know where that's going to take you. And if there's something you need, like your dryer's broken, or you know you want to go to a show and you want to split costs and, and travel expenses, like having that community is a great way to do that. Um, like I said, I'm so blessed to have such a great community from local to competing and online. Um, I've always had a great online community. I'm gonna take a sip of my seltzer, sorry. Maybe. Um, and the local one kind of came later. So I know a lot of, because I, I, I worked at PetSmart and a lot of PetSmart, um, in PetSmart, a lot of those salons don't have a great atmosphere. And I feel like a lot of people from corporate feel that sometimes, um, you know, where it was always when I was there, I, it has changed a lot and it's not anything against corporate or corporate groomers. Um, but it was always, it felt like a competition. Like, you know, oh no, that's my dog. And, and oh, why are, why are they booked first? And I should be booked first. I've been here longer. Um, and I think a lot of groomers kind of keep that and that like high school mentality. <laughs> Hi, Drew. Uh, people are walking by me and sticking tongues out. It's really hilarious. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch the camera next time and catch them. Um, that person down the street is not your competitor. You're your competitor. You are the only person you're competing against. 
and that's true down the street or in the ring. Like this weekend, um, I did three dogs, and I I'm a little blurry there. I did three dogs, and I didn't place, which is wasn't expecting um, necessarily. But I got a lot of good feedback, and I'm close. I'm very close to placing, and I'm an open and. I know not everybody wants to compete or can compete or anything. Oh, Laura Jane's here. Say hi to everybody. We're doing groomer problems. We're talking about building community. Oh, community is important. Yeah. It really is. Community gets it done. If you don't have community, you got nothing. You can't do yeah. it alone. You no, know, you cannot do it alone. And I learned so much from this girl, it's not <laughs> even funny. And you want to know how I repay her? I take Lenny, her giant cocker spaniel, and he basically let him free run into a pile of prickly things and leaves. And we had to blow dry him at midnight. Let me rephrase that. She had to blow dry him <laughs> at midnight. So sorry. It's okay. So sorry. I'm never walking Lenny again. He's like, Lee! Yeah. No, Lenny Lenny totally like went, woo, beeline. Indeed. <laughs> Castle, do your yeah. thing. All right. <laughs> See you later. Um, so... Yes, community. Laura's from um, New York City, and I'm sure that everybody knows or have seen her videos. Um, she does a lot of live streaming as well, and videos, and she's like a super cool person. And I didn't know her in real life until, you know, like a couple of years ago, but we talked online all the time. So it was just instant when you met, when, I, when we met. So that's what I mean about building your community online, interacting with those people and not just letting your guard down a little bit to let people in. Because burnout, there's such a shortage of groomers and we all feel like we need to do everything all the time, all at once. And if we're not doing every single dog, somebody else is going to do it. And honestly, what's so wrong about that? I don't want to do every dog. I don't want to do half of the dogs that I do do. Um, you know, there's plenty of dogs and there's not enough groomers and you're not going to lose anything by being friends with that person down the street. You're not going to lose anything by being friends with that person online. You're only going to gain. When you let something in, you get something even greater back. And that's really, really important. You know, you're if you're not making a community and you're not experiencing other groomers points of view you're not learning things you're not you're only taking away from yourself by putting up borders and not doing that and keeping all of that negativity inside because you're worried about someone else's you know going to take my dog or I don't want to be friends with them because they do this at their shop you're not working at their shop you don't have to be best friends but you need to build a community and you need to, when you're having a hard time, whether it's, is it really slow? Is it just me? Like, where are all the dogs at? You know, you need somebody to be like, no, it's fine. It's slow here too. You know, oh, it's fine. Like, uh, you know, your, their bather calls out. Maybe they have somebody they can send down to your shop to help. Your dryer goes, maybe they have a spare dryer. You don't know unless you build that community. And that community is going to help you through those problems. They're going to, you know, um, help relieve some of the stress. They're going to be there to have your Sorry. back, and you're going to be shocked. Drug central. You're, you, it's amazing to me. It's just, um, I've gotten so much from people that I've let in, and even if, I've given more to some and not gotten that back. It's not a it's not a one on one tally. And you have to, you know it comes back around in a big web. Because I know this person and then this person knows that person and now they're gonna introduce us and now we you know we know each other and then they need help with something and I know somebody who can help them and then they know somebody who can help me. And I don't feel burnout. Like, I've been grooming almost 15 years. And, I, and now I'm, I'm blessed. I have really good joints. They're very, very, very flexible. So I don't have wrist issues. Um, I do have a little bit of arthritis in my fingers from playing the flute and being cramped up for, you know, 12 years. But um, <laughs> and it's obviously my holding hand. So that never gets any rest. But 
Um, I don't ever feel mentally burnt out on grooming. There's other things that I feel burnt out on, but with grooming, you know, I, I wasn't on Facebook for a few months. I'd say like six months or so. I mean, I was on, but not really, not how I normally was. And I was just going through a lot of emotional things. And um, I had so many people try to reach me. They, they called my boss. They text messaged my boyfriend. I mean, even Lindsay was text messaged me to see if I was okay. You know, I'm not, I'm not somebody that, you know, has a lot of people in real life. Um, I've moved from Pennsylvania to Indiana and now where we live, I don't know anyone. Um, so this community of groomers is really important to me and I, sorry, um, I couldn't do this without them. And I just want everybody else to understand that, like, we're each other's back. Like, we, God damn it, sorry. I haven't had any coffee and I'm very, <laughs> very, um, it's been a long weekend, but it's not been a long weekend because I'm stressed out or, well, I'm stressed, but I'm, like I said many times, I have probably a very significant anxiety problem, but, um. I'm not any more stressed. Um, it was a long weekend, and I had so many people have my back, and I've had other people's backs, and we do this together. And that's, we do it together. And you need that community to do it and to keep going, whether it's every day in your shop, or you wanna come to the trade shows, or you wanna compete or certify. All of those things are stressful and rewarding. And you need a community to help you through the stressful times so that you can reap that reward. If you just keep going and trying to keep going alone, <laughs> I know Karen, thank you. Karen is, um, she said you have us. I do. And that I had, Karen and I met on the Groomers Lounge before we ever met in real life. And so Karen's known me since I was you know, the, almost the first day I picked up my clippers. And that's what I mean. I'm so blessed to have this community. And um, it's, it's really, it's what keeps me going. It keeps the stress down. Um, it keeps me mentally engaged with grooming. I learn things from so many people all the time, like even everyday people. Um, you have to reach out, you have to build your community, and you have to have that back, you know, it's just going to keep the stress out, and you're going to have someone that is always going to be there to say, you can do it, you can get over this, you know, yes, it's stressful, but this is what I do in that situation, and even though sometimes words don't help, they always do. Because it's the intent behind the words is what we receive. And so, again, build your community. Reach out. Come to trade shows if you can. Like, um, I'm going to flash back to Ohio really quick because this is, this is just an amazing show. Hi, Jovi Wave. This is my Groomer Problems live stream. Uh, we're talking about building community. To Jovi's from Canada, guys. She's from Canada. Um, she's going to lose in the duo duel to me and Kat, um, but she doesn't know that yet. But this is the trade show, and, you know, this is not just competitive groomers. This isn't just, you know, uh, vendors. This is everyday groomers coming and checking out products, and there's groups of them from their shops. You know, there's friends that are local, and they're all shopping and having a good time. And that's what I mean by community. Like, this is groomers, this is our space, and nobody's going to understand you like another groomer is. So, um, yes, yeah. Jovi, Jovi agrees with me. <laughs> so go out, build your community, whether it's online, in real life, you know, just your trade show family, if you go to a lot of them, or even to go to your local one, 
you can go and organize a group and say, hey, there's a Barclay show and I want to I wanna go. Does anybody want to come with me? And you're going to make friends so fast because we can talk about dogs all day long or we can not. But you don't have to talk about anything else. You're fine. Um, so, all right, guys. I, I'm sorry this was not... I. Uh, and this was a little disheveled. Um, like I said, no coffee, and we packed all morning, so I'm a little tired. But, um, you know, and if anybody needs help building a community or, you know, ideas for getting a local group off the ground, um, you can message me uh, on Facebook. And like I said, uh, coming up, we have uh, Liz and I are doing that seminar in Philadelphia, um, which I'll post details to my page about. I also, little birdie told me that I might be speaking at New England. And I did just um, shoot a groom source video this weekend uh, at PetQuest. So that'll be coming up. I'll, I'll talk about that release date. And it was for um, grooming a pet cocker spaniel. So that's what I have coming up. Um, and in two weeks, when I'm not tired and a little frazzled and, um, you know, surrounded by a million wonderful people... We'll talk about how to budget for trade shows if you don't think you can afford to go. So, everybody have a great Sunday, and I'll see you in two weeks. Barb will be back next week um, for lounging. Um, same time. Have a good one.